Hi. 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 I'm Delicia Simmons. I'm Dominique Darden. I'm Brittany Castaneda. I'm Allende Chase. I'm Simona Stith. I'm Jelana Torres. I'm Kimani Smith. What's up, y'all? I'm Talashi Sawyer. I'm Katrina Battle. I'm Corey Laney. And we are Pernod Noir. Pernod Noir. Pernod Noir. Pernod Ricard. North America's Black Employee Resource Group. Welcome everyone. We are enjoying some awesome cocktails, celebrating black excellence. I'm Delicia. And I'm Dominique. And we are the co-leads of Pernod Noir, Pernod Ricard, North America's black ERG. Today we are here with a few members of our ERG, and we're going to have a little conversation about black culture, our experiences, and our inspirations. And we might tap a little bit into why Beyonce is just so daggone fabulous. <laughs> uh, but we're about to find out. Let's get into it. I'm going to ask an important question here. Okay. okay. What were some of the experiences that have helped shape you? Anybody else here went to HBCU? Right here. Yes. That is truly yeah. what shaped me going into at least my professional career, just coming from a place and having an HBCU where you know you are welcome, someplace mm -hmm. I can go back to every year for a homecoming and live it up with my people and have a good time, that's, that's for me is a beautiful feeling. I grew up um, you know, in Detroit, Michigan, and you know, I was one of the first in my family to actually go to college. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, to be honest, to be 100% honest, I'd had no really clue of what HBCUs were because Let's I just what I didn't. For. What, I did, what is HBCU? Oh, yes. oh. Yeah. Historically, historically black college university. There we go. Mm -hmm. right. Let me get that and so for me, it was one of those things. I visited uh, Howard University is where I went. Mm -hmm. HU. Um, <laughs> the uh, other HU. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> and it was and a lot of people have already said it, but just that energy you feel, it's that yeah. family you feel, and it's just almost like. You're leaving home, but you're going home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, it was just so that was, that was yeah. 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 I love that. A drink to that. <laughs> I think for me, it's really my parents, mm. uh, mainly my father. I'm a first uh, generation American. My entire family is from Liberia in West Africa. Mm. Um, my father came over on a, a scholarship for uh, electrical engineer to Ohio. And he came by himself, came and, and did his education. That taught me really to per, to really go after your passion. Mm -hmm. um, education, especially that we have this conversation of being in African Caribbean households, how education is first yep. showing up, showing it and approved wherever you are, whoever you are, and that's also being authentic to yourself, but it's also about education and drive for taking care of your family. So that's really what started off for me personally. You know, I had a, I had a very similar upbringing as well. You know, my parents came from Bar Barbados mm -hmm. and being first first generation Bayesian American mm -hmm. and me growing up in the suburbs with people who didn't really look look like me and growing up very much American, there was this struggle mm -hmm. in the teenage years mm -hmm. of what do you mean I can't I can't go out? You know, all my friends have curfews. Me hold my ten. Yeah. You know, ten. and it was when the street oh, lights hey. on. You gotta be in the house. Listen. But it was this thing and, and I've I've noticed that and I'm finding this now as I'm as I'm, you know, in my in my forties, and I I saw it more in my in my late thirties, of all those lessons of remembering who you are, right. remembering your education, remember how other people see you all those lessons that I kind of had go in one ear and out the other as a child, mm -hmm. they resonate. They're resonating uh, now. When do you guys feel the most connected to culture in general? I feel like being able to show up authentically mm -hmm. as ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, I'm wearing my hair natural. I don't have the tightest texture, but it is curly, it is yeah. big. And several years ago, I wouldn't have necessarily felt comfortable yeah. to do this, mm -hmm. but it's really nice to feel like I have that freedom, I have that support. If I wanna wear my hair big, if I want to 
I'm gonna tie up yes. my turban and yes. wear some hoop sure. earrings. But I feel like in the past, I haven't necessarily felt comfortable to do yeah. that, yeah. to show up in a way I would show up in my community. Right. But I love that I'm able to do that more and more. And I feel like that's how I start feeling more connected to my culture, whatever I'm able to be and show up as my authentic self and kind of create space and facilitate mm -hmm. that for other people to also feel like they can do the same. Yes. Yeah. When I interviewed with Pranel originally, I debated whether I should just wear my natural hair in a bun, pulled back, mm -hmm. and I opted to wear my hair big, natural, curly, mm -hmm. for every interview and still got the job and I, I felt accepted mm -hmm. in my blackness. I don't want to be cliche, but I feel that as being part of the ERG. I think my background, I grew up in a Puerto Rican household. My mom's Puerto Rican, my dad's Puerto Rican, and I didn't really have that connection to my black side. Mm. So I kind of feel like I have that Puerto Rican experience at home, but when I come here, I can also connect to this other side of me that I didn't necessarily yeah. have yeah. growing up. Yeah. And it kind of feels like yeah. putting two halves together yeah. and then like yeah. being around everyone else. <laughs> yeah. I think it was very uh, welcoming. Yeah. Uh, coming into this organization and feeling like uh, I didn't have to, to code switch. Yeah. Right. Uh, I could be who I am yeah. and people would accept Absolutely. me for who I am. And I'm still professional, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm professional Absolutely. in a way that I do it and I can still serve with my, my same purpose, if that makes sense. What or who uh, most inspired you I think everybody probably gonna want to say their mama. <laughs> I'm trying not to say my mama. After my mama, I have to, let me think on that. I'm, I think mine is just not one person. Yeah. I mean, I said it before that I'm highly motivated by the people that I see that are represented and sitting at the round tables yeah. that are mm -hmm. having these discussions. So I have you know, a, a, a wide range of, of women that are not just black, Yep. Same. that are also mm -hmm. white, and so, to me, it's just you know people who are truly invested into to seeing me succeed. Mm -hmm. That's what I dive into. Right. Right. I, mean, I would say, like my parents, obviously, my mom is a force of nature, is a stay-at-home mom, and I think another person that inspires me is my dad. Mm -hmm. I some may know I lost him earlier this year, and I don't want to cry, but um, he was just just hearing like people that were inspired by him mm -hmm. and just made me want to like live in my purpose and be a, a kinder and more genuine like human being and just think I think if you walk through life thinking like oh when I'm gone what I want my impact to be it mm -hmm. kind of makes every decision like more purposeful. I think for me it's very much uh, very much my peers like a lot mm -hmm. of what a lot of you all were saying um, and I, I think back to my group of my core friends that I mentioned earlier and uh, we work in different industries different kind of functional verticals or however you would call it and just hearing them talk about their professional struggles, victories, challenges, like, you know, I have to be inspired to like, how am I gonna push and advocate for myself? Like, what are the things I don't even know to ask for? Mm -hmm. And so hearing these stories from like, fellow women, women of color, mm -hmm. men, black men, it's like, hearing these stories, like, it's like you open up possibilities for me that I didn't yes. even realize were there, right. so I know to ask for more. I know to push for this, whereas right. I would have been afraid and not yeah. feeling empowered before. Right. And I asked, I'm like, oh yeah, 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 that's fine. So mm. Don't shoot at the bathroom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of like just pivoting into like a feel-good moment here. What makes you feel like you belong at Pernod Ricard? I would say just from a belonging standpoint, I was literally gonna say like a, a conference. I started five years ago in 2017, and two weeks on to um, just the job, we had a national sales conference where all of the divisions got together, and um, and I just remember we went to, we were in Hollywood, Beverly Hills Hotel, we had a talent contest, our division won, and, um, and it was just one of those pieces where I didn't know anybody com coming into the conference, and I literally left that conference giving people hugs that I just didn't know, and I think that's just like that environment that you have at Pernod where you're like, hey, we may not know each other, but we're going to connect on winning. We're going to connect mm -hmm. on cocktails. We're going to connect on, look, I know your day was crazy. Mine was too, but let's go have a cocktail. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm about to say, cheers to that. Yes. 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 We do another cheers. Yes. 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 Cheers. 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 Well, that about wraps everything up. 
Thank you all for watching. And if you want to become a part of our group for Known Noir, whether or not you're an ally or someone a part of the community, please don't hesitate to reach out. We've got lots of fun stuff planned and we would love to have you at the end of the day. So happy Black History Month and we'll see you soon. Thank you.